did something I'm like. All right, so hello damn. everyone and welcome today to another episode of Spray Pro 1000: The Verdict. That was I am like Spray Pro 1000. Uh, today's going to be kind I of a weird episode. The three hour it's a game that I played and initially I when it came out, so and then I came back to strong, finish it very recently. Strong, I said to myself, you know, even though I'm at this point, I'm literally failing in my life to get it. I feel bad about the amount of effort that I put into the game that came before. I'm not talking about killing the first kill. I'm trying to quit. Um, but I, I feel like it would be wrong of me to, to like it as much as I do and have enjoyed it and also to have a view of it. And just in general, while Dude, I'm... Dude, armor pressure is such a good move. Uh, no, no, I didn't get to break the song. No, no, no. Tales of Berseria yeah, yeah, is the... Splendid Charm, I'm sure, with the benefits of people who constantly want to be franchise. It. Uh, Tales oh, franchise see, is a JRPG ball. franchise, it's, it's very oh, angry, and it's got a lot of different stories, you know, the character, 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 and tragedy on the field. Last enemy to concentrate is basically turned into a demon, and everyone she knows and loves either betrays her or dies, and she's forced to partner up with essentially the rejects of society. Essentially, your team becomes the villain to go on this massive campaign to get revenge and to avenge your fallen brother and everything. Um, and throughout the game, there's a lot of cool tricks in terms of the game itself. There's a few that are very cool. Um, the game itself, in my opinion, is used to bounce better than the Stereo. There's a lot of characters and story where you have a very grand and cool and straightforward way to really help all of you. No team has ever really... Uh, it's time to to I, I don't know. That seems like a complaint. Seems like a better version of Berseria is constantly uh, full of new twists and turns. I found the plot to be very enjoyable from start to finish. Uh, I feel like out of all the Berseria games, this one is the only one that is also the most interesting and the most feel like they're beholden to me. I don't like the characters. All when they come together kind of gel very nicely. There's several humorous skits. There's also very several uh, several very uh, serious skits as well in, in, in storyline no, no, elements, the one I just uh, which is really cool. And like with most RPGs, I really didn't ultimately so this enjoy, will especially towards the end when you get towards the concluding arc. There's a lot of cool stuff that happens in it. Now, on the flip side of it, I feel like we're still here. It doesn't really show too much I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of in terms of gameplay. The gameplay of every Tales game, uh, they have a really complex name for each and every one yeah. of them. Uh, for this game in particular, though, whereas most Tales games have you locking on to characters, or locking on to enemies, rather, and then you move basically on a two-dimensional plane with a jump command as you're uh, I thought my game broke. I hate that. that. Hey, what is that? forward and remove Okay, I like this franchise. I won't improve by the fighting buttons in order to run these combos. These combos are really good. And then when you release it, you return to the typical Tales two-dimensional combat. Berseria is actually the first game to force in the franchise to abandon that formula. And throughout the game, that's one of the strengths I think that really shows up in the gameplay. Is that you are no longer like bound down to the new button. You're targeting the wrong dude. You have full control over the new where you want to go and how you want to go about it. And that, in my opinion, can you do it. Um, to be Jeez, what the fuck is that? Uh, there's no jump commands, which I always thought were kind of weird and, and, and weird and wonky. Oh my god, here we games. go. They always felt like they, they wanted to have an aerial combat system and they never really got wow, that, that, that kind of problem. incredibly wide. Um, well, right. Beyond that, uh, additionally, you have, you know, your typical party of four. You also have the ability to swap right. characters in and out during combat. It's difficult in a lot of games, especially for the game. Really Dude, that's common, fuck which off. I like. You could bring in people uh, who are fighting on the sidelines, I guess, or whatever. Just 
sitting on the sidelines. I like how they have like old um, school style music and you can tap into the mic. And the oldest remember is how they're like, 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 premise of the combat system of Tales of Graces is that you use these arts, uh, using these arts allows you to basically stagger enemies and steal what's called souls from them. Uh, when, when you steal souls from your enemies, the music in this game is for good. souls like, initially five. In my opinion, what really sets this that. game at the cut um, above is the story. I like I like the story a lot. At least I'd say that's my favorite. Souls, so three, four, the combat five, is a little better. You can now, press depending on your character R two. As we and get add, further in the game, and we get more specific arts. moves. Yeah, it's getting yeah, a little better. Then use up one soul, and then. It will let you do some I kind can of see how this system would be really good for your first age. On your first age, uh, like initially, I believe, it's a like three. Wow, okay. Um, okay, I see what it is. On your first age, you're so rough, and as it fills up, you'll be able to do that. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, to execute Mystic Art. And this is what I'll say to you in the gameplay. So you use your art to steal souls from an enemy. Um, you're, you're essentially staggering them to knock the souls out of them, and then you take them, and then you can use that to build your first game and your first game, and then you use the Mystic Art to level like three or above. Or uh, uh, rather, that consume three water stage or more. Now, yeah, be careful because the enemies can also feel your souls by staggering you or inflicting a static element on you for uh, feeling like a very strong oh, okay. impact on the damage. Wait, what happened to Isaac? What? Is, um, Oh, we're getting bodies. It, it's pretty much like the basis of the game. Like, yeah, oh, I'm stunned. On them. Also, I'm taking paralysis, like, burn, and on, on enemies, and take away the souls, as well as on you, it'll take away your souls if you get hit by it. Um, and thanks. enemies also can do some things like that. They're, you know, enemies also have missed parts from the enemies and the bosses. And it's really kind of fun. I, 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 feel, I feel like I started this game, the combat system is not fixed at all. You can just don't have the tools. You don't have the tools. Yeah, that's all right. It's one of the most perfect combo together. So we're going to put in the one on 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 the those things, you know, the combat was a little bit more, uh, I, I wish that one more combat method was a little bit better, but I can't see where any of them. But I think you'll see your first, uh, your first piece limit, and your, um, your, 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 the number of souls that you have on your character based on the amount of upgrades, the, the total amount of upgrades on your character. It's just like a very weird system. It feels like it should have been a little quieter in my opinion. Uh, instead of giving you loops and bounds every, like, you know, five or so well, hours, fun. what they really should have done was smooth it out so that way, you know, gaining souls the big old and gaining extra about. burst gauge uses was a natural progression of you playing the game as opposed to, well, Nothing. You know, last second sort of a deal. Something. Okay, well now you can up this, now you can up that. You might not even realize towards I the end of the remember. game that you could really up your character's soul limits. And it, it's, it's a lot to upgrade this stuff, by the way. So it definitely is a very grind-heavy thing. Thankfully, Tales of Berseria has, you know, pretty fast battle load times. The battles are pretty quick if you know what you're doing. And I think that Tales of Berseria strikes a rare balance for me between having fun overworld combat and also having fun boss fights. Uh, I really do enjoy it. Now, most of the boss fights in this game do this thing in Tails games that I don't really like, which is where halfway through the boss fight, the boss will uh, just basically go beast mode and will just do massive reversals that will probably combo people to death. That's never been something I've liked in any game, and I don't like it in Tails games. It's not something you can't get around, but it is something that is annoying. Now, once you understand boss fights and you understand how they work, it's not that bad. But it is something that, again, was in Zestiria and it is again in this game. And I think it was in Graces and, and maybe one or two of the Zillias, if I remember correctly. Um, that said, 
I do like the boss fights. I do like that the bosses are more or less beholden to the same rules as you. Uh, you know, your your whole goal is basically to break through their defenses so you can then get a combo off on them. You know, the bigger your combo, the more damage your Mystic Art does. You know, it creates a very fun loop of gameplay. And that's why, in my opinion, Berseria has some of the best combat I've seen in this series since, I would say, like, Zillia 2 and, and Vesperia. Um, that said... I do kind of wish that certain things were a bit better. You know, bosses don't randomly decide to go beast mode. You know, the leveling of your gear, I get it. They wanted to make it a very important part of the gameplay loop. But also, don't force it. You know, don't don't make it so, like, it, it's a very sudden jump in things. I feel like if that was more normalized throughout the game, it would be cooler. But between the awesome gameplay and the interesting story, I really did like Tales of Berseria. Now, graphically, Tales of Berseria, even at the time of release, was still more or less a PS3 game. Now, they have done a lot of evolving for the Tales series over the years. If you remember how these Tales games used to look with Symphonia and Abyss, they don't really look nearly the same. Characters are having like full-on emotions on their faces. The cutscenes are very well done. You have almost full voice acting throughout the game. In fact, I'd argue that there's there's more times where the game is voiced than it isn't, which is pretty significant. Uh, and I really like that a lot. The skits have evolved to have full-on animation in a lot of them. Not not and not like you know full-on cutscene levels, but you know characters will move around during while they're talking. They'll have different expressions. They'll change mid-sentence. It's really kind of nice when you remember <laughs> how skits used to be in the past, where it was just like a character in a box, uh, and they would just move their mouth, and there would be no voicing. And that was Symphonia. It's crazy to think that now you know we fast forward to 2020, uh, 2017. I'm sorry. And, in, and we have all of this evolution in it, and it really brings out the personality in the characters. It helps emphasize things on, on you know, cutscenes. Cut my only complaint about the skit scene is that while you're playing through the game, my god, do they go out of their fucking way to make sure you have, like, four or five skits back to back to back to watch. And in my opinion, they could have maybe condensed it. It could have, because, because, like, basically, if, even if you're not interested, you're just gonna skip through it. I feel like a lot of these skits, they while they are pertinent, you know, they relate to things going on in the story, which is always nice. You get a little bit more extra view into what the characters are thinking. At the same time, I'm not really a fan of the fact that you know something big will happen. Oh my God, you know, we weren't expecting this, and then you have to sit through like five cutscenes back to back. It's almost like why not just play all the applicable cutscenes in a row? You know, like again, it's not really something that you know kills the game it murders the immersion it ruins the experience it is one of those things it's like well why not just have them play it all back to back like as a continuous cutscene and i i think that maybe they were afraid that people you know i like that they give them the choice I, maybe i guess what i'm asking is that they should have like a play all cutscenes button if you have multiple cutscenes trigger at the same time i think that would be kind of cool because then if you're interested in the skits you know you could play them and you know whatever it ultimately they give you the control it just is kind of weird when you know you have a, a big you know a big cutscene will happen and then you break the flow with a lot of skits they're good skits they're the best in the series and and i i would never take that away from them but it is a little bit flow breaking other than that i mean you know the environments look pretty good uh the the character models look really good in my opinion you know tales games they always the, the special characters always look good the generics not so much but that's like every rpg on some level um then the main characters the important characters all have unique models and look interesting and cool and then you can tell who's a generic because not only have they, you know, not only do they look like they were made in a random character generator, but also they look Thin the same as they did like skin. for the last 10 Why not breed them to get rid of the poison years, altogether? Uh, With no poison, bugs will eat them. So what I'm saying is presentation-wise, Berseria has it in space. With it looks nice. You got a lot of emotion from the Getting characters, both their cutscenes, during gameplay, oh, during subtlety. skits. They basically, like the whole game the plays like a face. steady, smooth evolution for some of these characters, and a lot of them get pushed to their breaking points. This the is not a very happy here is RPG. It's a very edgy, producing very grim spirits. sort of an outlook. I've been and thinking about I would say that the ending is still new. satisfactory. Well, don't don't think that they're going like, to like bitch out and not give you what you want at the end of the game. Wine? They give you what you want at the end of the, the game. Chilean and for that, I give them credit. Should be because a lot of other games will be simple and just take the easy way out and not do that. Berseria says, no, we're going to do this, and it's going to be fucking cool. And I respect that. It would be a lot easier for them to not do that. 
Um, I've considered all those so options. So ultimately, but what I would I say about Tales of Berseria? What would I give Tales of Berseria? Uh, I think that for Tales of Berseria, it's got a lot going for it. And I actually really kind of like exactly. the fact that they Not went out of their way to add in a lot of cool least. stuff. Now, granted, Sleeping I would say that maybe I wish the game was a bit longer. Maybe I wish that the game had... Uh, and sitting it you know, in direct more sunlight areas to explore. Like I said, I'm, I, I'm always an old-school RPG kind of guy. I like that you have full yet. open world when it where you can run around and explore and do stuff. And this game it's has ready. overworlds Solar and you know, has towns, and will be easy but to it really feels like if they had Hawaii added like, one more section to this game, True. it would have been really but pitch perfect. But overall, it's still, in my opinion, one of the best Tales games i played. So, will you make a cast all in all, uh, I would give Tales of Berseria a no. 92 out of 100. Found Reason being is be because unlike Zestiria, which was very bland, filter. very spammy in You're its combat, wasn't very interesting, I feel like Deep they, they the gave you so much more mountains. freedom in this game. You I could pick which party of four you like, unlike in Zestiria, where you are forced to have two characters and you have to swap between the other four. You can freely swap in the characters you want to swap. You have more freedom in the combat. The combat, yeah, while it is it's less spammy with one button. You know, toward the end of Berseria, I was just it throwing whatever was sticking at the wall and it wasn't very there enjoyable and it no wasn't very better. great. Uh, I feel like the combat is actually taste. really well done. My, my <laughs> now, but fair point, fair enough. I do feel this later. I played as a different full character. Full character. Full I didn't play as well throughout my playthrough. And the character I ended up playing as was still fun as fuck. I enjoyed the shit out of it. Obviously, the game was designed for one player to play as well with it. I enjoyed playing as another character so much. I just stuck with it, you know, from basically the whole game. And there's a lot of cool things. Each character feels unique. They bring a certain thing to the table. Now, my only complaint. Is so that there might not be a good system for spellcasters. Spell cast. Ships come back, and that's my biggest complaint because it feels like the combat system was designed for melee. I wish that you know they that they, the the, the yeah, casters. Uh, I think you know, there's the there's basically like three different sets of characters in this game. There's the two melee Water units, which are Velvet and another character who I played as. There's the two casters, which are basically two characters primarily designed around throwing spells at enemies. And then there's the like the in between characters who have a little bit of both, and I feel okay. that from the little bit I played of the Actually, other characters who have spells on them, I was that the on system home really is designed for casting. The Plains, and that's when really I saw my biggest complaint is that like unless you really bites, like maybe if you do masterful so strong, levels of planning and dragging out my the perfect strategy, but if you just want to pick up and play a caster, I feel like it's very complex, it's very hard because of the linear nature of the combo system. In order to unless you have spells at the start of all your combos, you know you only get to pick between their hiding spots, right? And then you know then you get you know, across beast, the different steps in your combos mean that if you want to get to that better spell later, and you know, it's further down the combo. The and Nova they do have some skills back. to counteract right. this a little bit, but and I feel like just having a different system for casters go? in general I tell you, I was so would be better. And even if that means like you have to change things back. around for the, the hybrid units, that would be cool too. That way, you know, you pick which spells you want to use. You can maybe swap between different spell modes would be kind of cool. And I think that would be enjoyable. But as it stands, Tales of Berseria is, in my opinion, one of the Better oh, okay. you better gonna have be with careful. tales across the board. Probably in my top three best see, tales games of all time. Like that. I highly I recommend it. Bad if you like good RPGs. I mean, at this point, you know, probably already okay. played it. Goes yeah. on sale. If you haven't, though, I 100% recommend. Yeah, no, he it. can I only enhance it myself. That's it for the verdict, ladies and gentlemen. A very, very, very high rating so, for a game I really did enjoy. Uh, weapons like that? If you're wondering, I gave this like an 80 something, 82 or 83. Because it was, eh, how do I see these items the mill generic, typical, but I thoroughly enjoyed the shit out of Tales of Berseria, and I hope you will, and you play it. I'll see you next time for another Tales game. No, wearing equipment.